Hello, my name is Sarah Plofkin, and for my Honors Art History final project, I'm going to be looking at The Lantern Bears by Maxfield Parrish. This piece is in the permanent collection of the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas, which, according to Leslie Peacock, purchased it in 2006 for over $4 million. Parrish, I discovered after reading Peacock's article in the Arkansas Times, lived from 1870 to 1966 and was an extremely popular American artist who was most well known as an illustrator. She explains how his artworks are characterized by their rich and luminescent use of color, their neoclassical imagery, and their impressive and detailed craftsmanship. Cutler describes how Parrish created his figures using photographs of costumed models that he would paint over, and how Parrish achieved a sense of luminescence in his color by varnishing over every layer of color he painted. His work was widely popular, Cutler explains, especially in his own time, to the point that by the 1920s an estimated one in four houses hosted a reproduction of at least one of his paintings. Part of his popularity and broad appeal came from his openness to the financial possibilities of illustration and to creating reproductions of his paintings. After reading Peacock's article and Margaret Wanger's book on Parrish, I learned that alongside his book illustrations, Parrish also produced magazine covers, art prints, calendars, murals, and even advertisements. Cutler notes that Parrish's distinctive style influenced many successful later American artists, including Norman Rockwell, who referred to Parrish as his artistic idol, and Andy Warhol. As a child, Parrish was influenced by the pre-Raphaelite English artists, especially Don Gabriel Rossetti and Lord Leighton. Cutler explains that the pre-Raphaelites were a group of artists in the late 19th century who based their style on the styles of past artists, especially focusing on the importance of design, and who were influenced by romantic writers to paint romantic portraits of princesses and saints. I see in this painting in particular the influence of romanticism with the glow of the lanterns in the sky and the somewhat mysterious air caused by the presence of the four orbs in the background any of which could be either a lantern or a moon. The focus on light, the transient time of day, the pseudo-outdoor setting, and the implication of leisure, leisure, although the clowns are working, their presence suggests a party to come, are also reminiscent of Impressionism. This influence of Romanticism and Impressionism in his works makes sense, given that Parrish was painting in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, at the very tail end of Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. As Laurie Adams explains in A History of Western Art, there was an explosion in the avant-garde, the vanguard of experimentation in the arts that focused on newness and modernism at the turn of the century, in which many different artists started to go in a multitude of new directions. The art world began experiencing experimental styles like Fauvism, Expressionism, Cubism, Surrealism, and the list goes on. While the Lantern Bearers does not quite fit into any of these categories, like the rest of these experimental early 20th century artists, Parrish used the foundation of Impressionism and other earlier styles to experiment and make his style his own. His painting and marketing techniques are also firmly grounded in the early 20th centuries, as he successfully exploited new technology to make mass market prints and to paint figures with the aid of photographs. The Lantern Bearers is an example of one of Parrish's magazine covers, and as Peacock notes, it appeared as the frontispiece of Collier's magazine on December 10, 1910, in the middle of his exclusive six-year contract with that magazine. Peacock explains how it uses all of his standard techniques, including his repeating layering of color and varnish to achieve the radiant orange and blues, and his use of a photograph of a model, Susan Lewin, to create the pose of the clown sitting on the stairs in the lower left. Cutler points out that the vibrant cobalt blue that appears in the sky in this picture was used so much and to such great effect by Parrish that it has been nicknamed Parrish Blue. 
In this representational, although not illusionistic, illustration, six clowns hang lanterns at a tree. The clowns, who are dressed in white, are located in the midground of the painting, standing on a series of steps that occupy the bottom third of the painting. They are separated from the tree by a low wall that is the same simple brown color as the steps. However, they are also connected to the tree by the fluffy gray buttons on their outfits that e echo the green leaves of the tree. The top half of the background is an intense blue created by Parrish's technique of layering colors and adding varnish. There is neither atmospheric perspective nor linear perspective, and the steps and the wall form flat horizontal lines that divide the background into discrete geometric sections. The lanterns are an orange that complements the blue of the sky, and they seem to glow with an inner light. Some of the lanterns are held by the clowns, while others hang in the tree, and still others seem to blend into the background and become moon-like. The composition of the lanterns draws your eye in a zigzag across the painting. The clowns are also active, forming multiple diagonals, with some limbs outstretched and others foreshortened. In contrast, the background is, except for the intense and varying color of the sky and the curious chiaro at the top of each step, relatively flat, creating a fairly shallow picture plane that puts the viewer right inside the center of the action. This feeling is enhanced by the size of the painting, which is about the same size and shape as a window in a house, creating the impression that you are looking out through the frame into a scene right on the other side of the wall. It is fascinating to contrast this work by Parrish with another very famous work by Vincent van Gogh, who was painting just a few years before Parrish in the period of post-impressionism. If we look at the lantern bearers and the starry night side by side, there are some very obvious differences in style. Parrish uses a relatively realistic style and a very detailed, meticulous brushstroke. Furthermore, his painting has a sense of calmness and the motion of the painting is gentle and peaceful. Van Gogh, in stark contrast, uses a very painterly brushstroke to create wild and passionate sweeps of energetic color across his canvas. But at the same time, these two paintings are so interesting to examine together because they do remind me very much of each other. Neither is terribly concerned with formal perspective, but the effect of motion and color. Both are night scenes, and in both, the primary focus of the artist seems to be in recreating the effect of light using paint. They both radiate with a glow that is nearly impossible to capture on film, a glow that illuminates not just the painting, but also the entire room around the painting. It is this luminous quality that drew me into this artwork from the start. The color and light of the lanterns is simply incredible. When I saw it in person, I had to resist the urge to lift it up and check that it was not being secretly backlit because the glow of the lanterns was just that warm and bright. Less immediately striking to me, but equally impressive once I could look away from the lanterns was the glow of the sky. It is deep blue on top, but lightens and pales towards the bottom, perfectly capturing the moment in a summer evening after the sun has set, just before night truly falls. I was also enchanted by the expressions on the faces of the clowns. They seem physically identical, but each expression is unique and captures a different mood. In the end, I chose this work because it simply makes me feel happy. It is full of laughter and light, peaceful, but with a promise of future joy.